Okay, in this lesson, we're going to look at some of the uh, calculations involved in thermochemistry. And thermochemistry deals with the heat uh, or energy transfer in chemical reactions. Okay, the basic equation that we see in uh, thermochemistry is Q equals MC delta T, or otherwise known as Q equals M cat. Okay, in this equation, Q is the energy in heat and usually we'll see that in terms of joules which we get a capital J or calories with the small c. In food you have calories but they are a big calorie and we already learned that one food calorie is actually 1000 of what we call chemistry calories or just calories. The M is, of course, mass. Usually, we're going to see that in grams. So if you're given kilograms, uh, it's often need to be converted to grams. And we'll see why in a moment. C is the specific heat. And each uh, substance has its own specific heat. And actually, each phase of matter for a given substance has its specific heat. Uh, what I mean by that is... Uh, water has a certain specific heat, which is 4.184 uh, joules per gram uh, degrees Celsius. Okay? But ice has a lower one. It's around 2 joules per gram degrees Celsius. And steam, or water in the gas phase, is also around 2. All right, so they are different for each phase. Usually you're given this information, sometimes you'll calculate it, uh, but the units here are also important. And we talked about in class that this degree Celsius could also be uh, a K, right? Because we're going to see that this delta T is actually a change in temperature. And since the Kelvin and Celsius scale are equivalent as far as degrees, uh, change of 100 degrees Kelvin is also a change of 100 degrees Celsius. So unlike in gases where everything must be in Kelvin, the degrees Celsius and Kelvin are usually interchangeable here. All right, I guess I wrote over my delta T here, but delta T means change in temperature. This triangle thing is the Greek letter delta which means change in and it's simply the T final minus T initial. Okay, keeping the final and initial in order is important to keep our sign positive or negative depending on the heat flow. Remember that negative heat flow or a negative energy just means that the energy is flowing out of the system and a positive means it's flowing into the system. So let's look at how we solve a few example problems. Okay, our first one is simply we're heating some water. So like on the stove up here, you'll put a pot of water on. We want to know how much energy it's going to take to heat. Uh, in this question, 1,200 grams of water from 20 degrees Celsius, which is roughly about tap water, to 80 degrees Celsius, which is fairly warm. Remember, 100 degrees Celsius is boiling. So we're just making some hot water. Okay, So we simply look and we see, well... Uh, saying how much energy, so we know we have to solve for Q. All right. So we know Q equals the mass. Okay. In this case, it's the mass of the water, which is 1,200 grams. Okay. And we'll multiply that by the specific heat of water. Well, the specific heat of water is 4.184. Whoops. 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius, meaning for it takes 4.18 joules to raise one gram of water by one degree Celsius. And our delta T is T final, which is 80 minus 20 degree C. And there's our equation. We're going to see that the grams will cancel here. The degree Celsius will cancel. We're going to be left with joules. So we plug all those in. We end up with like 301,000, uh, 328 or something like that. Uh, to three significant figures, we get 301,000 um, joules. Okay, 
but the question requested it in kilojoules, which is quite often used because of the large number of joules. So there are 1,000 joules and one kilojoule, so we end up with 301 kilojoules. Okay. Our next question uh, says, it gives us an amount of energy. We start off saying we've got 4.9 times 10 to the third calories. We know it recognize that as an energy or our Q. Okay. We've got a mass of 87 grams and it's a piece of metal. We don't know what the metal is, so it's just a piece of something. And we know the temperature change. So we're looking for the specific heat. Remember C is the specific heat. So we're going to say C equals Q divided by M times delta T. Okay. Our Q in this case again is 4.9 times 10 to the third or simply 4900 which would probably have been easier to write and these are calories. Okay. Divided by our mass which was 87 grams and our delta T which is 816 minus 304 K. Okay. So we plug all those in we get a C value of 0 0.110 calorie per gram dot K. You notice that none of the units canceled here so we're left with calorie grams per K. It didn't specify whether it needed to be joules per gram K or um, or calories so we can leave it in what we have here of calories. So let's look at one final example. Okay, this time uh, we're heating a cookie sheet. Okay, So we put the cookie sheet in the oven. Uh, we know it takes a certain amount of joules. So let's start looking through here. We know our Q is 66938 joules. Okay, so joules and calories and even kilocalories and kilojoules are very common. So we've got to get used to make used to looking at the units and what you need to find out. Our mass is 425 grams. Our C is given at the end. It says specific heat of aluminum. 0 0.90 joules per gram K. So we do notice that our specific heat is in joules and the Q we're given is in joules, so we're good there. Okay, there's a couple ways to approach this. Uh, I think the simplest for most people is to say, well, let's solve for delta T. Okay, then once we know the change in temperature, we can solve in a second step later. It's easy also to plug into the full equation solving for T initial but I think it's easier for a lot of people in two steps. So we've got delta T equals Q over MC. Okay, Then we plug in those numbers. So we got the joules, we got our mass is 425 grams and 0 0.90 joules per gram K and we see we have a delta T of 175 now since our original temperature was C and this was the delta T right delta T is the same in C or K so we can convert that to C uh, then we see that delta T is T final minus T initial and what we know then T initial equals um, T final minus delta T which means we have our T initial equals 200 degrees C minus 175 degrees C which means our initial temperature was 25 degrees C.